Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. We're going to have one of our regular contributors today talk about something that's really intriguing to me, and I think uh, I think to you too it will be, because you know what's going on in the world today, and communications is just absolutely crazy. And as uh, Brent Kelly has said here, how to stand out in today's noisy world, ain't easy. Ain't as easy as it would. Well, let me tell you about Brent for just a second here, and I'll show you his picture. Okay, there he is. You've seen him before. Uh, he's the CEO of uh, BizGrizz. How do you like that name? I love that name, marketing. And uh, he works with agents. He was an agent for 15 years. He's got really good ideas. The first time I heard him, I said, there's a guy who knows what he's doing. Well, he's been on, on the line. He's not just a consultant that, that says, here's the wonderful way to do it. He has been there and done that, and that's what really makes a difference. And one other thing, he can communicate. So, enough said. Brent, what are we going to do today? George, well, first of all, we're going to have a good time. Uh, but <laughs> oh, we're yeah, gonna, of course, <laughs> actually. Obviously, I love, I appreciate you having me back on, and I'm excited about that. But we're going to talk all about, you know, how to stand out in this crazy, noisy world mm -hmm. out there today, you yep. know. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, feel free to ask questions throughout, as always. And, uh, you know, I think I've got some good content here that, whether you're an agency owner looking at ways to, you know, kind of reshape your agency or certainly more importantly, maybe train your producers or give, give them some ideas yep. or you're a producer, uh, this is going to uh, be very, very um, valuable to you today. So, um, yeah, I just, and I just want to kind of start out. And it's, it's interesting. I was doing through some, some research and saw, I was curious about how many, you know, actual insurance agents are out there today. And the most recent thing that I saw, and again, this could always change depending on, you know, different channels, but 374,000 insurance agents alone in the United States. And, uh, <laughs> I didn't so know a lot that. Of people, <laughs> yeah, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of people trying. So I've got you know a picture here, this, this lady here trying to stand out in this crazy world. And beyond just the competition of insurance agents, it's the fact that the consumers have changed so much, right? I mean, um, you know, they, they have more knowledge, they have more confidence, they have more options than ever before. And a lot of the traditional sales and marketing techniques uh, that have been used for years just really aren't being as effective. And so what I really want to focus on is how can I help you know agencies and agents then just stand out uh, above all this noise. So okay. first thing I want to talk about is uh, this person here is frozen in their tracks. Uh, and, and why the, the biggest resistance that I have when I either am consulting or speaking in front of a group or training somebody one-on-one -on -one is that we, we become frozen. It's human nature, frozen by change. Um, you know, that you just kind of go, oh, that's a lot of things that are happening out there in the world. I, I don't know, you know, we, we've kind of made it through so far. I think we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Um, but I'm pretty passionate about this, that there's no, no time to freeze. you got to take action. And I always tell people, I said, you know, when you move forward, you may not always make the right decisions, right? You're going to have a few mistakes, but the only way you're going to lose is when you stop moving. So you've got to keep going forward. Don't, don't become frozen. One of my favorite quotes from the ever famous John C. Maxwell. I love his books. Are you a, are you a John Maxwell fan, George? No, I'm not. Maybe I should get uh, that. Uh, tell that. I'll talk to you about it later on. I want to know about that. I sure. like these kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Now John's a, he's a leadership expert, but you know he talks about change. It's the price of progress, right? For for agents and agencies to change, mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, there, there's going to be there's going to be some some pain involved, and uh, you know, so unfortunately, the time though is running out for agencies, for agents, for everyone in the industry to progress and move forward, you've got to be open, at least open to change, right, and then start moving. And so that's why uh, this is so imperative. Uh, this is some stats that I, I, I saw. Have, actually, it's been out there in a few different places, um, but fascinating stuff. And, and maybe, you know, some people in the audience have seen this before, but it still shocks me that it's that high. I mean, you think about these stats for a minute. Eight out of ten of your prospects already has a perception of you as an agent or an agency before you ever make contact with them. Um, you know, and, and so Amazing. insurance buyers, yeah, it's crazy. Insurance buyers, both personal and commercial lines, either one, again, they've got more power. And they're going to be doing research and checking and analysis and want to know who you are and what you stand for and what you've done, right, and, and, and what people are saying about you. I know we've done a session on social proof, but, uh, you know, and testimonials, but they want to know what's out there. And the ship with that is that you don't hold the cards. Right? It, it, it's... You're no longer, as an agency or an agent, the gatekeeper of information. You know, it used to be for for a prospect. You know, even 15, 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago, really. Uh, you know, to understand 
you know, what a certain coverage may be or how that coverage applies or different scenarios. It's, well, hey, I tell you what, let's set up a, a meeting, in your office, my office, coffee shop, whatever it is, and I'll, I'll tell you all about it. That way I can inform you. Uh, but you don't have any special secrets anymore. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, information is everywhere, you know, at the, at the palm of your hand. And uh, Robert Kiyosaki, he's another great author and speaker. I love what he talks about uh, as far as the industrial age that, you know, we're at the end of it. It had been for a while, the beginning <laughs> of the information age. Mm -hmm. And I, he's pretty straightforward in this quote, and I just kind of like it, you know. is that the people who are living in the industrial age are getting their butts kicked. And those that are thinking in the information age are winning, and that's the challenge. Amen. And, uh, yeah. So, and what I would just say on that, too, is, you know, processes, systems, and the knowledge of how to do things, it's still relevant. You know, so I'm not saying that, that having those processes is not relevant, but in the information age, or what I call the knowledge age, you've got to do more than this today. You, know, you need to do something with the knowledge to use it to create new knowledge. And, you know, the know, the know what kind of, of knowledge is important, but it's not an end in itself. Rather, I see it as a resource, it's something to learn or think with. And, you know, as I talked about change, uh, the knowledge age, change, not stability, is a given. So my question is, is you know, how does this all apply to you as an agent, as an agency? Uh, how do you do that? And, and I would just say in business, the information age provides an opportunity to introduce solutions to problems. It allows agents an opportunity to attract others interested in your message, build authority, enhance relationships. It's just that new mindset. Mm -hmm. And and never and, and this is a thing where as much as change sometimes paralyzes people and I don't know, I don't I don't know what I don't know, um, there's never been a better time to transfer your thoughts and ideas to those businesses and people that need your help. I mean this is the best time ever. You know, I tell that to agents. This is this is this is awesome, right? Yes, there's a lot of noise, there's a lot of competition, there's you know, there's people coming at you from all different directions, but you have an opportunity at this point. Uh, you know, you have to realize that in information age today, your greatest asset is not a product, a service, or a company. Your greatest asset today as an agent or as an agency are your ideals, ideas coupled with action. And Good. these are ideas that cause momentum, ideas that solve problems, and ideas that introduce a new way of thinking. So, again, I just, I kind of want to start out this way because I want to get people just to get their mind shifted a little bit and understand not just the changes, but the opportunity within those changes. Hey, Brent, you know, I just, yes. just, just as an aside, I think, you know, I think, I think people kind of uh, intellectually understand this. At least I have, and I'm in, and, and most people, and I'm in it all the time. And what happens is, I mean, yesterday I was at at, a, at the bank. I was talking to the bank manager about something, and uh, I, I wanted uh, her to call uh, to call uh, somebody, the third party, for us. And I said, "Where'd you got your yellow pages around here?" And she looked at me as if I was an idiot. She said, I don't need the yellow pages. She was already in Google while we were talking. And yeah. about 15 yeah. seconds later, she had the number, and we called it. But, I mean, you know, we just tend to – it's been that way all the time. Now, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sometimes we just don't read it. So I hit myself in the head and said, come on, George, get with it, baby. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I, I can tell you, again, I'm, I'm, I'm 38. I haven't used the L pages in probably 10 years, but, right. but I know some people. That, yeah, but it's just, and you know, and, well, and and I was, I was probably one of the first people that went from a landline phone to all cellular, and I was kind of people like, really, you don't have a landline? I'm like, well, why? Yeah, you know, but right, uh, right. you know, but again, I mean, yeah, th things are changing, and you mentioned Google. The next slide, uh, it says it pretty well. Your reputation precedes you. Uh, you know. <laughs> And it does. And, you know, there are countless attributes that determine your success as an insurance producer, but none more. You know, at least people could argue with me. There's not much that, that that is more important than your reputation. And I think that you know, for years you'd have a conversation, you know, within you know the insurance community or sales trainers, whoever, and say, well, you either have a good reputation, right, and you've built it over time, or you've done some stupid stuff and you got a bad reputation. Uh, I believe there's a third component to this that's more pre prevalent than ever today and that's a third category of no reputation hmm. that 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 it's not necessarily oh Johnny's great or Johnny's bad it's who's Johnny and in today's digital world your reputation is determined long before a sale can be made and it's relevant 24/7 365 everywhere you go your reputation is in front of you um, this is a, a I don't put this up as a joke this is the actual business card that I use for a while um, but 
but you know the question that I answer, I don't know if it's even a word, but I talk to agencies and agents. Are you Googleable? Right. I mean, you hear a lot about search <laughs> engine optimization and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just kind of fun to say Googleable. Uh, again, I don't know if the word exists, but I, I'd like to use it. It will. Um, but yeah, it would. Yeah, if it's not, it, it's probably in process. Right. But you know, so agents agents today they've learned how to grow their presence and credibility well before a meeting takes place, and then after it ends. Yeah, you know, I've had people for. Uh, Several years telling me, you know, well, Brent, you know, real selling takes place face to face with, with a handshake, and I would say, Amen, I love it. You know, if I, I would much rather sit down. In fact, I need to go do that, have a cup of coffee with you, George, than, you know, the webinar. These are great, but I'd much rather see people face to face and have a conversation. But the difference is, is why not carry on that conversation after the, you know, a face to face conversation ends or before it even starts? Mm -hmm. So again, I always ask the question, you know, if, if someone searched your name, you know, Mr. Agent, what would they find? You know, and it sounds crazy at first, but I always ask, how's your online reputation? You know, would I be impressed or would I be underwhelmed? And if I was your target audience, right, if someone that you're trying to write business for and I search for you, would I want to learn more about you? Would I gain value from you? Would I desire an appointment or would I yeah, not know you exist? So it's an important, it's important thing to think about. And that all comes with that new mindset. Um, and here's a question too that I, you know, I don't get a lot of necessarily pushback, but I think it, it brings some questions. I'll ask people, you know, what do you think is more important right now as an agent in, in your success? Is it being a great marketer or a knowledgeable insurance agent? And, you know, it's kind of a trick question. The answer to mm -hmm. me is both, right? You, you got to do both. Um, yeah, I say, you know, yes, you sell your insurance knowledge in the form of product service for commissions, but that's not really why clients buy from you. You know, every successful insurance agent today understands that they do much more than just transfer risk for their clients. And so I always tell them, you know, you're no longer just an insurance agent. The great agents today and the ones that are starting to succeed in today's economy and with millennials and all that going on, understand that they're first marketers, they're publishers, they're creators, they're innovators, they're speakers, they're value providers. And for a lot of agents, that seems like a foreign concept. You know, I just have to know my coverage. I have to know my stuff. I have to, you know, do my diligence. And again, that's all important. Um, but no insurance producer can help their clients financially if they can't first paint an emotional picture through their words and ideas. That's just the reality. You know, talk about standing out. If you can't paint an emotional picture through your words and ideas, you're going to have a very difficult time getting indoors. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't mean marketing by manipulation, tricks, tactics. You know, today's insurance buyers are too educated and they're too untrusting to fall for people that are not being authentic. Right? It's different than that. To me, it's it's about you know it's about content. And when I say content, you know I'm not talking about. I mean like this picture here kind of shows a blog. I'm not talking just about you know blogs or writing articles. That could be part of it. Um, you know it's not just limited to your website, your emails, your products, your service description. Everything your prospect or customer, everything that that they do that comes in contact with you or your agency is content. Right? It's any medium which you communicate with the people who may use your products or services. Uh, so it could be the words on your web page. It could be the email you sent to a client. It could be the headline on your brochure. It could be the words during a prospect appointment, right, verbally. There's just no hiding from it. It will make or break you. And yet most agents still don't see that opportunity. They don't focus on the communication aspect, both offline and online. They focus on just being a really smart agent, right? And I think you've got to do that, right? You've got to know your coverages, but you've got to today, to really stand out, you've got to be an exceptional communicator. <laughs> Um, and this is a, a quote I wanted to share. This this is uh, Anne Hanley. She's a she's a content writer and, and she's written a book called Everybody Writes, which is actually is a great book too, talking about wherever business you're in, everybody's a writer to some degree. Uh, and I, I'll read the start of this quote and then finish it. Just, Ours is a world where technology and social ideas, I think I have a typo there, have given us access and power. Every one of us has the awesome opportunity to, uh, <laughs> I have a couple typos, on our own publishing <laughs> platforms. Boy, that was a good slide, wasn't it? No, it's um, right. It says, it says yeah. it's okay. We can understand it, it. It says it. But she goes on to say that websites, blogs, email, newsletters, Facebook pages, Twitter streams, and so on, right? And so I, I don't use the phrase awesome opportunity lightly. The opportunity to change how we com communicate with people we are trying to reach and what we communicate is tremendous, yet we're not taking full advantage of it. And I see that directly uh, in the insurance world. So... You know, the question that comes up, and I, you know, spend first 15 minutes here talking about the opportunity and the changes, is why are so many agents still, I say, standing on the sidelines? Why are they not getting on the field and playing? Um, you know, and, and so 
I, I, some, some will say it's lack of time, others will say it's lack of knowledge, uh, a few still believe that there's not a need. I contend you don't really have a choice and here's why. Your prospective clients have more options than ever before, your prospective clients have more resources than ever before, your prospective clients expect more from their agent than ever before and that kind of goes back to what I said at the beginning and that those that deliver on these expe expectations will stand out and stand above. Right? And so that's an important thing to think about. And those that don't, I found this photo and thought it was kind of funny, but um, those that don't will continue to fight and scrape for what's left. Right? So you're going to have those agents who are going to rise above and create value with content and with their presence and, and providing resources and, and people are going to be seeking them out, their ideal prospects and clients. And the others are going to be playing the game of, hey, can I? What, what if I drop price five percent? You know, could, could I, you know, could I reduce commission to get this account? And you know, and you you go in and you got your requests for proposals, and you got eight other agents all competing for the same piece of business, right? That's what the world that's been for a long time, uh, and that's what agents are going to continue to run into unless they build this presence, right? Unless they they're able to find ways to stand out. So again, it goes back to the question: Are you a marketer or insurance agent? Um, and I would say one is expected. Right, an insurance agent. The other will make you successful, and uh, you know you better understand policy terms, definitions, exclusions, coverage gaps, underwriting, endorsements, all those things. Right, all those crazy acronyms in insurance. <laughs> um, but that, that makes me think about. It. I remember the one guy come up and speak, and he's like, you know, you know, you've you've been in the business too long when you got more letters after your name that are in your name. Uh, <laughs> well, I've seen a lot more of that too. Yeah, yeah, the CIC, CPCU, right? yeah, AI, yeah, it goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. But and again, and those are good things. I'm not taking those for granted by any means. Those are important. But you really get paid, I say, when I th you get paid through your content. Right. And, and again, that's written or watched or spoken. Um, and that's why you know a lot of agents are struggling. So I want to give a little perspective of what does great content look like? Because some people are like, well, I still don't really understand you know what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think sometimes people get worried that I, I think they get too dive too deep in, you know, the right mediums and how, and I, and I talk about these things, I help people directly to do that, but I think they miss the big point, the big picture sometimes, is that you have to help your customers do something that's important to them, you have to give a unique viewpoint, and you have to put 100% focus on your customer and view through his or her eyes, right? it's the whole idea of being, you know, put yourself in their shoes, um, and it requires much more than that you're just smart, friendly, and ask, hey, can I give you a quote? You know, can I get you a quote? Can I get you a quote? Um, you know, what I'm asking you to do to stand out, it takes hard work, it takes hustle, it takes training, it takes continual personal development. Um, you know, I teach a lot, George, on soft skills and communication, not because it's just something that's fun to do, but because, you know, and I think that anybody, whether you're a business or not, needs help with that to some degree, but because it's 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 vitally important in the success of your business. Um, so all those things, all those things are important. And I would just ask anybody watching this not to settle, right? Don't get too comfortable. Um, you know, the passion that you have it doesn't come from outside sources. And you know, there are there is a there is certainly a gap in many agencies today in the training programs that they're giving their agents. You know, uh, there's no doubt about it. I, I talk to agencies directly that say, hey, we're not really sure how or, you know, what it would look like. We're not sure about some of these things. But at the same time, it's up to the individual agent not to settle, right? If you come in and think that, you know, it should all be handed to you as far as here's the system, here's the process, and now I can just not have to work, it's not going to happen. So, you know, how bad do you want to make an impact? How bad do you want to help others? How bad do you want to become an industry leader? Uh, so you can't settle for just being another insurance agent. Um, you know, you've got to be one who provides consistent, uh, consistent value. Mm -hmm. And a ways to do that, the first thing I talk about is leveraging your strength. You know, you've got to leverage your unique skill sets, your knowledge, your passions, and experience. And one of the biggest mistakes, you probably heard me say this before, George, one of the biggest mistakes I see that insurance producers make is they try to market and sell products to absolutely everybody. Whoever's breathing, if you have a pulse, you know, and a respiration in your lungs, mm -hmm. You are a, what I would call a suspect, right? You might potentially buy something from me. Um, but again, this whole, you know, session is about standing out. To stand out, you've got to be clear on what you do best, the value you provide, what markets you serve the best. And that first starts with understanding you, all right? And I think this gets missed a lot too. So, you know, I ask people, where do you think a first sale is made? 
Is it initial conversation? Is it collecting an X date? Is it setting an appointment? Is it getting a signature and check? I think those are all great things, right? We all like to get signatures and checks, but hmm. you know, those could be access to the sales process, but they're not the first sale. I would tell you the first sale is made in your heart and it's confirmed in your head. You've oh, got to believe nice. in that. That's it's, nice. It's, yeah, your first sale, it's, 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 it's in your heart and it's confirmed in your head. And so, I, you know, again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these for the, you know, for the sake of our time today, but I think your mindset shift will go from how do I make the sale to how do I help more people enjoy this experience. And to do that, again, I think every insurance producer has got to have a self-belief. And this doesn't mean that everything out here is perfect and that, you know, there's not mistakes. So the first point here is agents must believe they work for the best agency in the world. Does that mean your agency is perfect? Not by any means. But you gotta have you got to have belief that when you go and you're talking to prospects or making phone calls or writing content or whatever it is, a networking event, that you are, you know, sticking your chest up proud for the agency you work for. That really gets my attention. I think that's a wonderful thing. I never thought of it that way. God, the best agency in the world. <laughs> that, well, I just love that word. I just love that part. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, no, please interrupt. I, 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 you're right, and I, I think you know. It, here's, you know, I've never really done this, but it would be interesting if I went out and talked. If I just made some calls to agents and say, "Well, how do you feel about your agency?" I mean, this is going to sound bad, but I think a lot of them go, "Oh, we're pretty good." You know, we're we're a nice agency. We do a good job. Yeah. Right. Um, it, it, it doesn't really transfer excitement, you know. And again, I'm not telling. And if you don't think that, if you think your agency you work for is is not doing things the right way, well, then that's a different discussion. Maybe that's not the right place for you to be. Um, but but again, you've got to have that belief that you work for the best agency in the world. You've also got to believe that you sell the best products and services in the world. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the independent, you know, in, in particular, that comes to the companies you represent. Um, you know, you got to believe 100% in themselves is kind of you know. Self-confidence 101, mm -hmm. but what do you invest in? It? What do you invest in yourself? You know, I always tell people, I tell producers, are you, uh, are you watching? Uh, you know, again, I'm not picking on TV, but I do sometimes. Are you watching American Idol, or are you reading a book on how to become a better communicator, or how to sell, or how to market, or uh, you know, whatever it may be, right? What are you doing? I'm not saying you can't have free time. You should, but what are you doing to enhance that investment in yourself? Mm -hmm. You also got to believe you're different and more valuable than competition. A uh, hard question I ask people is. You know, what makes you different from your competition? And it, it seems like a simple question, but I get a lot of it. Well, you know, we're, you know, we, we're really great service and, you know, we're here locally and, you know, mm -hmm. you got to dig, you gotta, yeah. Yeah, you you gotta dig a little deeper than that. And then finally, this is about outcomes, right? Why is the customer better off purchasing from you? You know, why, mm -hmm. why, why is that? And, you know, again, this is the outcome question is that their life should be better right after they bought from you than before. And when you have that mentality, it also takes away that pressure from, especially from young producers of, I feel like I'm selling, I feel like I'm selling. And it's like, no, you're serving, right? You're serving, there's a big difference. And, and when you believe that your customer is being better served from working with you, it's not that you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna antagonize them, but you feel very confident in what you're doing. So I think all these points are really important. And again, that first belief comes from your heart and then gonna confirm it in your, in your head. <laughs> And once you develop a personal belief system, uh, I think it's time then the next step is to examine your own personal sweet spot uh, by combining your passion and knowledge. And I have a uh, – do, do you golf, George? I haven't asked you if you're a golfer. Or not. Oh, I was for many, many years, but uh, not, not anymore. I, I wasn't very good. I got so frustrated with it. I gave it up. <laughs> Well, I uh, I enjoyed a play. I I played uh, I played all of two times last year, so I don't oh play gosh. very much. But yeah. but I I do like to play. But you know it's interesting. You look at uh you know golfers. This is true. I you know probably if it's baseball. I, I use sports analogies or tennis racket. Right? There's always that sweet spot mm -hmm. that if you oh, hit yeah. it in the right spot, it feels like you know in golf like you didn't even hit it. Right? It just comes through the ball, just takes off. Like wow, I felt so clean. And anywhere else you hit it, right? You're you're hooking it, you're shanking it, you, your hands are ringing, right? You chunk it, whatever. You just miss it, um, and that's because again, you didn't hit the sweet spot. And so I, I say this not to state the obvious, but to highlight the fact that your marketing and sales sweet spot, right, is not going to be the same as other agents. You got to find your own sweet spot in your community, in your office, uh, even those that specialize in the same line of business. And I've got a little. This is kind of my uh, generic little graph, but these are the four things that, um, as I've looked at that I think are really important for all agencies and agents to look at when they're trying to determine their sweet spot. 
You know, the first one is the passion, what you love, you know, mm-hmm. who you love, mm-hmm. why you're in business, right? Those kind of things, along mm-hmm. with ability. Ability is your knowledge, your skill set, your, your past experiences, markets, your company partners, right? I mean, because I've talked to agents who say, hey, I've got a passion for fitness clubs, and I used to work at one for years. I'm in insurance. This is a perfect fit, and they have no markets. Well, that doesn't work, right? You've got to have, you've got to have some markets that support you. And the opportunity, how many prospects are in that uh, particular niche or sweet spot? What's the competition? What's the geographical reach? How long is the sales cycle? Those things to figure out. And when you do those, then you find you can come and find your sweet spot. So I think it's really important for agencies and agents to look at these things um, because you do need to be an expert in a certain area and find your, your core strengths and put those together, and it'll, it'll be very, very helpful in your success. All right. And, and with that, too, um, it's about to find the target market. You know, how, do you, how, do you, how can you get what you want if you don't know what it is you want to get? Uh, so you know, I want to turn the, uh, the attention now to finding your ideal client. And another quote here, this is from another book that I love, uh, John Jantz, who wrote uh, Duct Tape Selling. He also wrote Duct Tape Marketing. Uh, but I love it. The secret to consistently creating an engaging uh, a sales process is to understand how to choose your clients and not the other way around. Hmm. Uh, it may sound counterintuitive, but you need to ex- select exactly whom you intend to work with and let your unique value uh, illustrate why working with you makes so much sense. And so it's a different way of thinking about that is that <laughs> versus just whoever selects me, it's I'm going to be very specific in who I select. Um, so I, I put this on there. I, I don't know if you do you fish at all, George? Well, I, I did for a number of years. I'm also slowed down with that. When you live in the mountains like I do in Santa <laughs> Fe, there's not too many places to fish. Well, there are, but uh, no, forget it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I am not I'm not a uh, very active uh, fisherman myself. But growing up, my family we always went to northern Wisconsin. Um, mm-hmm. I, I live mm-hmm. I live in Illinois. We go up to northern Wisconsin. It's in the woods and trees and and uh, lakes all over the place in the summer. And we spent lots of time fishing. And the prize fish up there, I mean, there's you know walleyes. Everybody likes walleye too. But you know the right. prize big thing is the muskie. Right? Everybody wants the muskie. Yeah, right. And, uh, you, you go, you see muskies on the wall at the resort lodge and muskie charts, and even the world record muskie was uh, caught at the lake that we stayed at. Now, it was the prize fish, but it was hard to catch. And you had to use the right lure, understand weather conditions, the tendencies, and be very hyper-focused, right? That was the target. Well, <laughs> when I went fishing, uh, I didn't catch muskie because I didn't really try. I just wanted to catch fish, whatever I caught. And uh, so I said, it's hard to catch a muskie when you're fishing for a bullhead. And these things were gross. Um, uh, they're kind of ugly. Maybe that was just my, my perception. Maybe other people like them. But, um, and I prefer, I, I'd, I'd get my night crawler, and I would just hang it off the edge of the boat uh, on a bog, and you just catch fish all day long. It would be sunfish, bluegill, and tons of, and tons of bullhead, right? It just, you're like, oh, this is great. Well, and you're probably thinking, what is this, how does this relate to insurance sales and marketing? Um, the thing was that, it provided action, right, to catch these bullheads and these sunfish, but it was a lot of work for minimal results. We didn't typically keep any of them. Um, you know, in fact, I would always, if I, when I was a little kid, I'd fish with my dad, and I would hand him over the bullhead because these things gross me out. I'm like, Dad, you take, and he's like, oh, you know. And, and so it was a lot of work for not a lot of, not a lot of pleasure. And, uh, and that's what I see often with uh, insurance agents. And great musky anglers like this guy here, you know, they define their target. They create a specific plan to attract that target. They learn their tendencies. They're hyper-focused on the specific target. And they don't get distracted by activities that don't contribute to their ultimate objective, catching that prize musky. And so to stand out in today's noisy world, you've got to have a clearly defined target. And, you know, like I said it before, if you think anybody with money that breathes is your target, you may want to reconsider that. Um, and, and with that, I want to get the mindset of thinking profit. A lot of agents, especially agency owners, I mean, again, don't get me wrong, these are good numbers. They focus on gross revenue, how many customers, sales. Right? Those are important numbers, but profit is the key indicator, right? That's, that's, that's the value equation of time and money, and you've got to value your time. It's your number one resource. It's not always about more prospects and customers. It's about better prospects and mm-hmm. customers, and that's what the agencies that are doing that are standing out. And they're also focusing on relationships versus just transaction. Right? It's not always just a numbers game. That's part of it. But when you focus on the relationships versus transactions repeatedly, you're going to maximize your profit. And that's about less competition, higher closing ratios, more quality opportunities, uh, shorter sales cycles, uh, increased loyalty through these relationships. So think lifetime value, not just amount of transactions. And to do that, you've got to build a platform. 
And I want to kind of end uh, today's little session here with you, George, talking about platform building and what that means to insurance agents and agencies today. Uh, I've already mentioned how the consumer has changed, the competition is fierce, but to stand out, you know, this old picture from 1956, you know, it used to be you had a platform, you, a platform is something that, you know, you're in a big audience, it sets you up high and you could speak to everyone in the, in the room, right, and that's what, how, what a platform was for years. Well, today's platform is different. Today's platform is built on people, it's built on contacts, it's built on connections, it's built on followers. And all the world's a stage. The problem is that it's crowded. And building a platform isn't about standing up and shouting the loudest, right? That's not what it is. I'm not saying just get out there. I see people on social media that just go on and all they talk about is, you know, buy insurance from me. That doesn't work. It's about building an audience that appreciates what you do. Mm -hmm. And I put some, I, I put a list of some things here. Um, you know, this is a, this is actually Harry Truman speaking to a crowd at a, at, a, mm -hmm. at the back of a train. Oh kind my of a gosh. Picture. Yeah. Fascinating. But, uh, yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah, isn't it's a good picture. Good picture. Yeah, it's neat, but uh, you know, today a platform versus just again standing on the back of a train shouting at people would be you know, your company website, your blog, your social media accounts, videos that you can produce. Podcasts are becoming very popular, and I've seen some agents use that effectively. Uh, speaking, you know, I mean, to be able to get up and speak in front of a crowd, you know, whether it be a webinar style or actually in a live audience, for, it could be for your chamber of commerce or your Rotary group. Um, you know, be able to speak in a networking group and be effective. That's so important. Uh, and there's still some things, you know, when I talk about platform building and content, most everyone just goes, oh, you must mean social media and blogs. Mm -hmm. well, that's part of it. But don't overlook, there's still newspaper, magazine columns, there's radio shows. I, you know, I know an agent um, down in Texas who's done really well on being uh, a weekly guest on a radio show. Uh, done very well for their business. They've partnered and, and done very well in personal lines with that. So, I mean, there's a lot of different ways uh, that you can build a platform, right? And I just like, and I would just like to say this: Why, why is it so important? There's there's three big things uh, to stand out. First of all, it's going to give you exposure. Secondly, it's going to give you a voice, and third, it's going to create engagement. Uh, you know, it, it's very unlikely your prospects are just going to randomly find you. <laughs> you know, it, it happens, <laughs> but it's rare. You know, it's rare. Um, you know, they don't want to be interrupted, so instead of turning out calls. Right, you can do some different things, and it gives you all those things. So, and again, it's about building connects, trust, tr connections, trust, and intimacy with your audience. So, I would just say this: you know, when I teach, I kind of want to wrap this. I always want to finish with action steps, and uh, you know, I've listened to some great speakers, and whether it be online, offline, whatever. And I've been guilty of this many times that I hear things, and I go, "That's a good idea. That's a great idea. I should consider that. I should do that." And the minute I go back to my normal day. It's gone, and so you know whether it's something that I said or somebody something else said. I just challenge everybody: if you hear an idea or a concept that makes sense of a work, just take one action. Um, you know, we all we all have good intentions. I do too. But until intentions turn into actions, they're just hopes and wishes. Like ah, someday I'll get to that. So I kind of want to wrap up with that, George. And then, as as I mentioned to you, I've got a, a kind of a special. Uh, announcement, I guess, or you know, for, for your for your audience that I would love to discuss. All right. Well, you know, I uh, I've been uh, we've been working together for a while, and I've been going to your uh, online uh, boot camps. I mean, here I am after being in the business for 100 years, still going to the boot camps, listening because I like to hear it. It motivates me. You're like, you know, you, I should like going to church on a Sunday. Uh, <laughs> you've got, uh, and, and we don't normally, you know, promote these kind of things, but I want people to go. I've not talked to anybody who hasn't gone to one of your uh, one of your courses and uh, come away much more uh, financially uh, good. I don't know what I'm trying to say is just that. They're worthwhile. They're plenty worthwhile. Go ahead and t tell us about the ones that are coming up now. Yeah, so I, I, and I appreciate the, uh, yeah. the the platform, you know, <laughs> to be able to do that in this case. But, yeah, in two weeks, so um, from, from the recording of this, again, depending on where you're listening to it, uh, I'm presenting an eight-week online marketing course focused specifically on helping agency and their agents grow their book of business, right, and stand out. Some of the stuff right. I talked about today at a much deeper level. Uh, and I know, George, you've been on uh, previous boot camps, as you mentioned. And mm -hmm. So this is eight weeks. This is about an hour a, a lesson. So you're looking at eight hours of content where I go step by step through through all of this. So it's you know a lot of this today was kind of higher level and why, which is important to, to understand that, but really to dig into some of the tactical things. All right. And so um, I'm officially announcing this. In fact, when you're um, when this goes, uh, you know, when this gets sent out and, and everyone receives this, 
uh, it won't be officially announced yet. So uh, you're, the, the Monday morning audience is the first one to hear this, so okay. I'm excited to, to present that, and then it'll come out to everyone else the next day. Good. But um, you know, insurance agencies, they need a system. They really do to enable their agents, and this is really – this can be for agents, but certainly, definitely for agencies, they're looking for ways to train their agents. That's the biggest thing I hear now is I don't really know how to, to train agents with some of these new things because I didn't, I didn't do them, you know, when I went through the business. So to train their agents to capture attention, gain trust, and earn loyalty before, during, and after the sale. Good. And, uh, and as you said, we've had some really good results. So there's two, th there's two specific um, academies. We're calling them standout marketing academies that we're presenting. One is the basic program academy. It's eight weekly live sessions. So once a week, actually, they're going to be on Wednesdays at 10 at 10 a.m. Central, but they're all going to be recorded. So if you can't make it, you have an appointment, something that comes up, good. you'll have access to all the replays. It will be yours. Mm -hmm. um, I give workbooks. I talked about having actions over intentions. So workbooks and assignments. So I'm leading you somewhere. Uh, I want to hold people accountable so that when we're done, we go, wow, I started A and now I'm at Z. Uh, also give you a resource guide. So anything that I use that's been helpful for me and my business, whether it be a book or you know uh, a link to something and, and you know different products and services, I'll give you all those resources. And then with it too, I want to give three months. Uh, we have a, a full library; it's growing like crazy. All my content that's being added uh, every week, really, we'll give three months of unlimited access to that. That's wow. 475 for eight weeks. Okay. okay? Uh, and then we also do a plus academy. This is designed really more for agencies. So uh, there's a program access for all the agents. So regardless of how many agents, we can get you in on the Standout Plus Market Academy, which is really cool, and also six months of unlimited access. Wow. And then what I'm excited about is I, I do consulting, and um, you know as as my business is growing, I mean I, you know I charge more for consulting because it, it's <laughs> worth it, and people have been happy with it. That's just the way it goes. And so I'm actually giving away two one-hour consultation calls which is a $600 value just being part of this this mm -hmm. course. It pretty much yeah. pays for it. And then, um, I don't know if I, I may have told you or not, but I'm in the process of writing a book um, that should be done sometime in May. I'm not sure when the hardback and all that will come out, but the ebook should be done in May uh, on this kind of, uh, on this concept. And I'll give you a signed edition, uh, edition of that book as well. But this is $6.95. So unlimited access for agents, um, two one-hour consultations. I'm excited about that. And then I wanted to bring out one thing, too, just for this audience. Uh, I'm not doing this anywhere else. I've also just finished a, a blogging course. It's a three-hour with additional videos and training tools for any agent or agency that wants to learn how to blog and do it effectively. This is the whole process before, during, after. How do you promote it? How do you write it correctly? All that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to give anybody that um, signs up will get that. Um, no charge extra. The free blog course just for the Monday morning. Oh, that's audience. beautiful. Um, God, that'll be great. It's such, such. It's been needed so long, so yeah, long. So this is so, how they get hold of you now. Yeah, this is how you get a hold of me. I know you, you mentioned we'll have a link uh, also, um, you know, on your page, but. If you're watching this now and want to go to there, um, that'll take you right to the landing page. It'll give you all the information, FAQs, course description of each lesson, um, testimonials we've had from previous attendees on different uh, camps, and then obviously my email there and phone number if you have any questions. Just call me, email me, ask me anything you want, and I'll be happy to uh, well, talk with you about Brent, it. Well, it's, Brent, it's terrific because what, you're, you're going back to the basics here, and, and even the basics. I mean, for those of us who have been in uh, business however long, those basics are so very, very important to us to look at. I, I would suggest not only people to sign up for this, particularly if you've got new people, new people in the business, new agents, new producers, those are great. But I would also, uh, well, I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to. I'll take this information and I'll put it in the email that goes out with the with this each week. Now it goes out to a hundred. It's about 110,000, and uh, I'll take uh, that and put it uh, in. I mean, so people can just click on this, either one, and go right to you, and they'll get all the information. And I like, I appreciate you uh, doing this. And what some one other thing I would do before we uh, quit, and that is to suggest to those of you who are listening. Uh, uh, Pass this on. Pass it on to people in your agency. It's really, really important. I mean, everybody. If I had an agency, I'd, I'd pass this on to everybody. Why not? I mean, for 30 minutes or something, it's just an ideal, or 40, it's an ideal way to kind of get your mind together again. And as usual, Brent scores. So, Brent, thank you again for the opportunity well, and for this presentation. Oh.
right? Thank you, George. I, oh, I appreciate it. And, and again, I mean, I really, I, I've always said I've got a, a mission, a passion to help agents uh, stand up, stand tall, and stand out. And, and Boy, you know, it, I, I it, and it jumps right out at us. So I appreciate it. Yeah, it jumps right out at us. We can hear it, feel it, taste it in your, in your voice. Okay, and for the rest of you, I'll see you again. Uh, well, next week, I want to tell you something. We're going to have, we're going to be setting up something that you're going to be hearing about in for now in the future. And it really has to do a lot with the marketplace and the niches and so forth that, that Brent just alluded to or talked about. And we'll be setting the scene next week. And the week after that, we will be telling you all about Monday morning markets, where you can now get at no cost to agencies a, uh, I mean, not, as many as you, as you want to use uh, recorded uh, that I'm doing with with uh, general agents and wholesalers and all that, that can go right on your website at no cost. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll get Brent on, uh, on the preparation next week so you can hear a little bit about his thoughts. And then the following week, here it comes. And uh, there's uh, it's a very simple procedure, but I won't go there now. So for the rest of you, I'll see you again next Monday morning.